Hey friends, it's Jessie. Welcome back to the channel and welcome to another video. Sorry about the noise. I'm pre-filming because I'm going to be going to Nevada for a week and I just needed to get some videos out. But of course, maintenance decides to work on a couple buildings down for me today. So we're going to try and work through it. It sounds like they're slowing down a little bit, but if things kind of get a little crazy, that is why. But today I'm going to be talking about my top 10 palettes for 2022 so far. These are 10 palettes that I've tried this year that I'm absolutely absolutely in love with and I can't wait to share my picks with you. I believe all 10 palettes that I'm going to be talking about came out this year. I think there might be one that possibly came out at the end of last year, but I tried it at the beginning of this year. So I will tell you which one that is when I get to it, but let's go ahead and jump in. Starting out at number 10, I have the Urban Decay Wild Greens palette. This one I feel has been getting a pretty bad rep in the YouTube community. I really like the shades in this one though, especially the greens. I don't know if I've ever actually tried the neutrals. Every time I've reached into this palette, I've reached for the greens though, and this shade Kale is just so fun. I love the grungy greens, and I like mixing this with other green palettes like my Melt Gemini. So for that reason, I am going to include it in my faves because I do really like reaching for the green row. I'm not a huge fan of the neutrals, but the Urban Decay formula in general just isn't my favorite. I think they're pretty nice. It's definitely not as revolutionary as Urban Decay shadows used to be, but I thought this color story was a lot of fun, and I've been reaching for this one a lot this past spring. Coming in at number nine, I have the Melt Gemini 2 palette, and this one came out in this spring as well. I did review this one on my channel, and I have enjoyed it a lot. This also has those grungy greens and also some berry tones. Berry tones are my favorite color eyeshadow on myself. And these grungy greens, I've just been reaching for grungier green tones a lot this year, hence why the Urban Decay Wild Greens palette was in my top picks. But I've really enjoyed this one. I was pleasantly surprised. I feel like I almost didn't want to like this one because there's only two shimmers and the rest are mattes. And I'm normally a 50-50 type of girl. Like I like half shimmers, half mattes. But I didn't feel like I was lacking anything in this palette and I thought the mattes blended out so flawlessly. It was definitely a fun palette and I'm glad I picked it up because I have enjoyed using it a lot. And I do think it is a good addition to my collection. At number eight, we have the Natasha Denona Pastel Palette. This one came out this spring as well. And it is in general, not my favorite Natasha Denona palette. I was really intrigued by it because I do like to wear colorful shades and I thought a fun pastel rainbow palette. And I do for the most part, enjoy a lot of the shades in here. I really like these bottom three duet, airy and zest. I like the aquas. This shimmer shade illusion is a fun like shifty duochrome and it's like a cream to powder. I'm not a huge fan of the quality. I am very fair skinned so I feel like a lot of shades will show up on me pretty easily, especially pastel shades because I am so light. And I do use a white base when using this palette normally. I use my P. Louise white base but I just don't feel like these colors pack the punch that I want from a pastel. I know that they're pastel, so they're not supposed to be like super in your face, but I feel like it takes a ton of building up to get it to the opacity that I want. I do like the color story and the shade selection and everything is a lot of fun. So I did include it in my faves for the year so far. It's just the quality for me that I just wasn't in love with. I feel like it's good quality, but it's not like the Natasha Denona quality, if that makes sense. At number seven, we have the Sigma New Mod Palette. I love the Sigma formula. I've really grown to love Sigma as a brand. When they released their Cinderella collab, I've really started trying stuff from them, and I'm definitely not disappointed. It has all those lovely berry tones that I crave. I love a good berry moment. In fact, if you go through my eyeshadows, I'm pretty sure half of my palettes are berry toned because I love them on myself. The shades in this are just gorgeous. It's really the shimmers that are the standout for me. Sigma has wonderful mattes as well, but I feel like it's the shimmers that really steal the show for me. And whenever I want a berry look, I feel like recently I've been reaching into these shimmers. Flashy, avant-garde, artsy. We have a lot of really nice mattes. You have a cream matte, some neutral brown, some berry mattes and even this darker matte. So I feel like you can create a lot of looks with this and a lot of variety. It's not just a berry palette, it's also a neutral palette. It's definitely not a bad palette. In fact, from here on up, I feel like I could interchange any of the palettes and be happy with the order. But just based off how I'm feeling today, I decided to rank this one in the number seven spot. In the number six spot, I have another newer palette. This is a newer quad and I just reviewed this collection on my channel. It is from the ColourPop Shore Thing collection. And this is the quad in the shade Wait and See. It is this beautiful 
beautiful aqua quad. Normally, I'm not a quad person. I'm not a huge palette person and I'm not a quad person. I'd say my happy medium is like 10 to 14 shades. Like I love enough that I can create plenty of looks and not feel confined to the same thing. But when I tell you this color story gets me, I feel like these shades are all so beautiful and I've reached for them individually with other looks. This light matte especially, I've reached for in conjunction with my Odin's Eye Soul Moon palette and I love all of the, the shimmers. Like, this quad is so good. There isn't a single shade in here I don't like and I do find myself reaching for this quad to create looks just with this quad, but also to use in conjunction with my other palettes. And given it only has four shades, I'm very impressed that it even ranked this high, but this is definitely one of the standout palettes for me this year. I'm I'm in love with this palette. Number five goes to the Patrick Ta Major Dimensions 2 palette. And this one I picked up when we were in California. I hadn't tried the Patrick Ta formula prior to this, but I have to say I really like it. There's still a couple shades I haven't tried. I haven't tried like this deep shimmer. I haven't tried the cream shadows, but these shimmers, the other four shimmers that I have tried and all the mattes, they're amazing. When people talk good stuff about Patrick Ta, like it is good. I really enjoy the shimmers. I feel like sometimes they pull a little bit lighter on the eye. It could just be my skin tone reflecting funky, but they're all really good. They always give that really nice wet metallic feel and then the mattes blend out so flawlessly. This one is the rosier toned palette of their two palettes now. And I did reach for this one a lot after I picked it up in California. I really enjoy it. It's definitely not my favorite palette of all time, but it is an amazing quality palette and I have to say, Patrick Ta is another brand I'm gonna keep my eye on because I'm, I'm quite impressed with what I've seen so far. Number four goes to the Melt Gemini palette. Now this is not the Gemini 2 palette, this is the original Gemini palette. This palette actually came out a few years ago. It was limited edition, but they brought it back this year when they released the Gemini 2, so I am including it in my trying for 2022 palettes. I did not try it when it first came out. I wanted to and then missed my opportunity. But when I tell you this has been such a fun palette, I am so excited for fall because I get to use and love this palette in the fall. We have those beautiful grungy greens, those nice grungier warm neutrals. I've really been liking grungy tones. I know they're very trendy right now and I feel like this palette just fueled that part of me that I didn't know I needed. It made me discover a side of me that I otherwise would not have known existed. I think the grungy tones are gorgeous. The greens are so fun. And this palette has been so, so exciting to play with. Like every time I reach into this, I feel so inspired. And I feel like there's different looks that I'm wanting to try or interested in trying. And if you look all over Instagram and YouTube, there's so many people that do looks with this and every single look I see is just phenomenal. So I do love this palette. I'm gonna continue to love and use this palette for the rest of the year, I'm sure, but this is my number four palette. We are down to my top three palettes. Does anyone wanna take a guess as to which palettes I have? Let's go ahead and jump into it. At number three, I have the Odin's Eye Solmon 2 palette, and this is such a pretty palette. This was the first palette I tried from Odin's Eye, and it's actually the palette I'm wearing today. I tried to do something a little bit different with like oranges and purples and a little bit of teal on the lower lash line, and I'm not sure how much it worked. I'm not loving the look, but I have done looks with this palette that I'm obsessed with. I definitely would want to include this higher, but I have not tried all of the shades, and so for that reason, I would feel weird ranking it higher than it is because I am still trying this one out, but from the initial few looks I've done with it, I am blown away. I'm definitely gonna be keeping my eye on Odin's eye as well. I think the quality of this is amazing. These shimmers are something else. Normally, I'm a spray your brush with a little bit of setting spray, pop that shimmer on the lid, but this one, I didn't have to spray my brush at all. They just glide it on, so nice. And this middle shade, Starry Sky, is such a good lid topper. I'm actually using that on the inner part of my lid today. I've really enjoyed using this palette and every time I look at it, I always wanna do something different. I have probably like 30 million looks that I wanna do. I wanna do like an all blue look with this top row. I wanna do an all purple look, an all warm look. I wanna do blue and orange. I wanna do purple and blue. I wanna do yellow and blue. Like there's so many looks that I wanna do with this still. 
And to have a palette that keeps me that inspired in my collection, I have a lot of palettes in my collection. If you've watched my A to Z project pan, I outed myself. I have 200 palettes in my collection. I don't think I've ever been this inspired by a palette. So if I had tried more of the shades and done more of the looks that I want to do with this, I'm sure it would be ranking number one hands down. But because I am still trying it out, I've only had it for a couple weeks. I'm only going to put it in the number three spot for now, just so I don't cheat out the other palettes. Number two is a palette that I don't know if it came out at the beginning of this year or at the very end of last year, but that is the Pat McGrath and Bridgerton collab. This is the first Bridgerton palette. This one is the Diamond of the First Water, I believe is what it's called. I love this palette. When I got this one, I used it nonstop for literally two weeks. And again, to have a palette in my collection of 200 something palettes that I continuously reach for every single day for two weeks. It says a lot about that palette. I have a ton of choices and to have a palette that again inspires me that much. It's really this shimmery shade up in the corner. This is the shade Regency Blue. Like this is the most beautiful shifty astrally shade I've ever seen in my life. And then of course we have berries. We have mauves. That beautiful pop of blue. There's a lot you can do with this palette and I thoroughly enjoyed it so much. I didn't like the second palette that they did as much as this one, but because I've been using this one a lot, especially in like February, like around like love season and everything, I feel like I use this one a lot. So I did want to include it as my number two palette. And now my friends, we're down to the number one palette and I'm shocked at which palette this is. In fact, Antonio has even commented on how much this palette has been enjoyed because he knows how many palettes I have. He lives with me and he has seen me reach for this palette more than I normally reach for my palettes. Not that I don't reach for my palettes, but this one I just happen to reach for a ton and I've kept it on my desk since I reviewed it. And that is the ColourPop and Star Wars collab palette. Now, I'm not the biggest Star Wars fan. I just now, at my 22 years of age, getting around to watching Star Wars for the first time. But this palette is so fun. You have those gorgeous blues, you have the gorgeous reds, you have warm neutrals, you have cool neutrals. Like it literally has everything you could possibly want. You have these cool marbled shades. And this collection also came with a couple jelly mud shadows. The one I've been reaching for most is Astromech, which is this really pretty shifty silver shade. And then of course the packaging is so dang cute. I'm obsessed with this one and the artwork in here is gorgeous. Like even if you aren't a huge Star Wars fan, I feel like this is just a piece of art in itself. Like it is gorgeous. The shades are so fun. The quality is there. The color story is there. I felt so inspired. I haven't watched too many of the Star Wars movies. I've been watching the Obi-Wan show. I've watched The Mandalorian, and then I'm not sure which ones out of the movies I've seen, but I've seen the newer ones with Kylo Ren and Rey, and then I've also seen the very first of like one of the older ones. So I feel like after watching those, I'm inspired by some of the scenes, like some of the fight scenes. It's like, ooh, red versus blue, or maybe I want silver and I wanna go for like a super spacey look. Like there's just so much you can do with this palette. And if I'm being honest, this is probably ColourPop's the best palette they've done. Don't come for me guys. I'm obsessed with this palette though. It is so fun and so inspiring. She's my number one. That is all for today's video, friends. Thank you so much for joining me and chatting with me about some makeup. Let me know what your favorite palette you've tried this year is. I'd love to see what everyone is loving. And with that, I will go ahead and see you guys in the next video. Bye, friends.